copies of me should I no longer be Brian Brushwood? Should I be Brian Prime? And perhaps the other one is the real one? Yeah, makes you think. And then I thought, I wonder what he's saying to that bitch. And then I realized, I've always thought of myself as a female, but never acknowledged it. And then I felt ashamed for using negative derogatory gender-based insults. My blow. That's what I decided. Show. <laughs> Mind shown? <laughs> A light. Shown the Aim way. From my eyes. <laughs> like Superman. Free flow. Man. McDonald's it's... fries. <laughs> Man, I'm just like Cyclops in that story where my eyes finally opened wide and then I blew everything up because I'm constantly shooting razor lasers out of my eyes. Razors. An economy of buying new razors. <laughs> Free flow. Luckily, oh. I've replenished my supply of razor lasers with the sponsorship from Harry's.com. Harry's. Not a sponsor of this show. <laughs> you know we really love them because they don't pay us. <laughs> if you shoot razor lasers from your eyes at all times, while you have sex with a woman we, who later is going to... Can we just agree that everything that uh, advertises on a podcast is terrible? Uh, Every service or, or thing. I mean, like, like not when we're talking about them. Then they're great. But normally, <coughs> they're all awful. Um, I think they're all... Checkmate. I think you just checkmated me. What about, <laughs> what about uh, Gary Kasparov's Checkmates? Now sponsoring Brian's oh, inability well, to love... speak. When it comes to checkmates, I go Gary K or No Way Jose. Apex says, this commentary from Bearded Men brought to you by Harry's. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, we get up there, we talk about like, oh man, you know what's a big pain is shaving just this bottom part of my neck. It's like, hold on, wait, let me move the whole of my beard so I can show you. Uh, this part's a real motherfucker. <laughs> what about... Or, or sometimes you want to get rid of a few errant stray hairs right below your eyes and you feel weird shaving your cheeks. That's a weird one. Not with Harry's. Not with Harry's. Hi, also everybody. My name's Harry's. <laughs> you might think that it was just Harry, but no, my mom plural my <laughs> names because she said, you're going to have something to shave, mister, <laughs> off your name, an extra S. <laughs> Turns out it was my balls. Um, I, there's nothing quite like a sh uh, freshly shorn scrotum. That's what my father told me. My uh, father's Dr. Evil. I'm Scott Evil. Scotty Tom. Uh, right, let's turn off some of the sad music. No right. way. Let's make it more sad. Oh, let's okay. let's let's uh, talk about cancer. I opened up. I was taking a shit right before this show. <laughs> Just yeah. And I opened up the Wired magazine. Is an article about the same fucking video game that made me cry in the park? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, no, it's, like, blowing up today. I've seen, like, nine articles about it. It just came out today, I believe. Oh, did it? Yeah. Dude, that'd be hilarious. Let's mock it relentlessly live on the show. That'll go well. You know what else is a dragon? Alligators in the past. <laughs> <laughs> a Komodos. They're dragons. Komodos and cancer. Birds, yeah. if you go back. Man... I was talking to a kimono last night, and I was like, hey, are you a dragon? And she was like, you don't know me. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I assume that's what she wanted to say, but, like, you know, she was just it was, she was just being disrespectful. Yeah, the ad dragon's a dragon, too. Ad dragon is a dragon, and he appreciates you referring to him as a dragon American. Uh, yeah, man. So also, Ad Dragon has cancer. I don't think we mentioned that, have we? A lot of uh, rumors on the Reddit about whether or not the Ad I'm sorry, Dragon. I'm sorry. Has this, uh, uh, my producer Tara Cates is informing me. Yeah. Uh, he is a cancer. Uh, he's uh, on what? What? No, actually, no. That's his astrological sign. He was born. Oh, he's a cancer. Right. He's a crab cancer. Got it. Yes. No, that's not. Uh, Boy, that's hold boy, on. That's... Wait, my producer Tara Cates is telling me that his pet crab also has cancer. Oh my god, that's yeah. awesome. Uh, oh, uh, I'm sorry, producer Carol Tate's telling me, uh, no, yep, yeah, he's a prancer. 
That's what it is. He dances. He's a dancing prancer. That's what it is. Oh, okay. That's Man. great. We apologize for the to, Wait a minute. My producer, Derek Gates, is now telling me that uh, prancer is an offensive term and you should call him either uh, uh, Cupid or Vixen. Uh, you know what? I'm sorry. This is. It says this on the card. Uh, that's on me. Still <laughs> nothing about the ad dragon. Still, still an amazing evening. Love an amazing it's evening. It's an amazing night. evening. It's a fantastic everybody. night. That's all me. That's all me. <laughs> oh, Christy Cates is tweeting me. He has a flanger. Uh, he has a flanger. He has a flanger. You know, I, I always thought that he had a an anger. Like that's what like he was anger. Or he's from Algiers, one or the other. I think it's probably that he's joined the Foreign Legion. Uh you know what? <laughs> uh Actually, I believe he's homeless, and now he's squeegeeing. That's what they refer it to when you go up to people's windshields and start cleaning them. They're like, "Oh man, he's on the squeegeeing again." Ain't um, nothing like, ain't nothing like that high. Oh, do you hear it? Do you hear that? Because I don't. I'm deaf. I lost my ears. In the great ear shaving, sponsored by Harry's. <laughs> I entered the competition to shave the most ears, and I thought I would win by shaving them both off. Mm -mm. It turns out somebody had a third ear, and I lost. Fuck. Have I... you ever worked so hard at shaving your ears off, and then you shave your ears off, and then, uh, and then old three-eared McGee comes in and says, like, like, oh, I'm sorry. I can't hear you because I shaved off all three of my ears, including the one up top. And you're like, well, fucking, then why didn't you even know that I was talking about this? Well, first? plus also, like, I don't I don't read lips at this point. So really, it just reads to me like somebody's just, you know. No, he's produced a video and, and it, now he brings out a big thing. Wait, why does it? Why don't you have teeth? <laughs> <laughs> That's all I see. I don't see teeth. I think it's prejudicial to really focus on teeth. So in my yeah. mind, all I see is just... Uh, teeth are definitely a, a sign of white society. Because they're white. Except for when they're yellow. Well, okay. So it's part of white and Asian society. I mean, it's, it's both. Fucked up that you said that. <laughs> what, what are you talking sometimes about? Sometimes they're also black. Okay, also uh, yeah. Panamanians oh. with, their, with their fevers. Brown. Uh, oh, yeah, okay, also, uh, Indians. That's both Native oh. Americans and, I mean, that's pretty much all the colors, right? Everyone, the, the, uh, oh, if you have gingivitis, you could be Native American with red teeth. Or you could have green teeth. Yeah, but there's no green people, Justin, that's just silly. No, well, there are, and they were sung about in that famous medieval song. Green teeth, there's green teeth, oh green, green teeth, teeth, green teeth. It's <laughs> pretty good. Green! <laughs> uh, it's not easy being green, Brian. Dude. Uh, yeah, man, I'm a lie. I wrote this song about it back in the day. Tell that to Kanji Club. Yeah. Hey, uh, someone has sent us uh, a little a little tradition in Norway. How to drink your morning coffee. I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> Damn. Wait, is he is he Oh my god. Damn, Damn it feels good to be a gangster. A real you see that tearing? Right there. Play, play that again. That's what's what's wrong with this video. See that tearing right in the middle? Uh, uh, right on his eye line. Do you guys see that at home? Yeah. That's gonna be gone. It's gonna be gone. We have all the computers now. We have the technology. I think we could do that Friday. Uh yeah. It's gonna be an all day thing because we have to oh, replace yeah. three of the four computers. Because this oh, one, you guys are doing you you, you guys are doing the big shuffle later yeah. this week. Yeah. This one will have to become the office. Everything has computer. to cascade down. Yeah. But dude, dude, damn, this motherfucker, it breathes, Justin. You press a button and it inhales. You press a button and all the fans for a few seconds, for a second go. And then it calms and goes. Jesus. 
Jesus. I've had, I've had computers that do that. They spin at 100%. Yeah. At first for like a couple of seconds. Yeah. But do they wink at you afterwards? And say, it's hey, going to be all hey, right, Brian. What's up? Hello. Uh, Friday. Friday, we're going to go inspect uh, Compound. Mm. Uh, there's apparently four confirmed other people there. Ooh. I'm going to walk out. I'm going to walk out. With a checkbook in hand, I won't have any money in the checkbook. Sure, but I'm gonna be. I'll, I'll, you I'll shouldn't have, have money in a checkbook. Uh, no. I, well, actually, I'll do. I will. It'll be hundred dollar bills, right? Oh, okay. And, and, so, and you'll sign one of them. Uh, your autograph. Well, here's one. what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take a bunch of hundred dollar bills. I'm gonna glue them on the side. I'm gonna have them in the checkbook. I'll open up, and then I'll just peel off hundred dollar bills one at a time and hand it to him and say, "Just say when, bro." And he <laughs> says, "At this rate, it will be seven days." And I was like, "That's. I'm gonna need more of these hundreds." Yeah, boy. Uh, here's something from RT. Vietnam cop clings to speeding bus windshield wipers. Whoa. Oh, is it driving forward? Is he going to fall and die? This is the end of I'd like to think RT wouldn't show that. He's supposed to punch through the window and say, Get out. Why is he doing that? I don't... Uh, okay, at this well, point, I am shitting my pants. When also, like, the the worst thing that could happen is the cop drops. Well, yeah, then that dude's gonna go to jail for... Or actually, he's gonna be killed immediately by other cops. Oh, wow, so Crumdum... They're, they're holding to, uh, to this, uh... Bullshit! This, this bullshit fascist agenda that corrupted by the lamestream media? If, you, if you've missed the saga... More last... like Crumb Bum, am I right? Oh, shit. Last week, Crumb Dumb said Brian was going to be second place by $5 million. And, and this, they're doubling down. They're saying that, uh, that, that you... Uh, that that uh, Daddy's Home might have fucking... Uh, uh, Daddy's Home schooled you. Hmm. Hmm. The cop didn't die. The bus came to a stop. It just turns off. out he needed to transfer <laughs> over at the East Station. <laughs> um, here's something in a foreign language that I don't know. Oh, oh. Whoa. So it's like creating a, a strobing effect with sound, I assume? Yeah. Van, van der Lafrec... Vente based Yeah, no, that's a sexual technique. The old Van der Lafrec... Hmm. They skipped. Uh, oh, 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 uh, oh, uh, uh, hmm. uh, uh, things and stuff and things. And stuff. So, oh, maybe I think. Okay, so that's like a hose that's passing by a base, a subwoofer, and then that causes the. They use a tone generator to. To generate to get tones. Twisted to get totally tits. Very cool. Seems legit. Uh, sixty-one million dollars on what? Oh, on the crumb dumb, right? Sixty-one million dollars to catch up. I don't know. So the good news is that Daddy's Home is pretty much going to be done this week because another big comedy's opening. Yeah. So the question is: Is there a hundred million dollars left in the tank for Star Wars in a month? I feel like that's the case, right? I mean, it's been out for how long? Three weeks? Four weeks? And it's made $800 million? Does it have another 10% in the tank? Hmm. Well, and Crumb Dumb's suggestion is that uh, it's like dropping 65% week over week. Uh, and and right, so right now you're over the average. 
but it sounds like he's expecting you to go under the average you would need sooner than is uh, feasible. Hmm. All right, but I, let's, I save, I let's save this. Okay, we'll table save, it. Save this for the thing. Hey, this um, good. yeah. Yeah, and then there was rumors that they might toss a Rogue One trailer like just in case they need a little uh just they need to, a little souse to get it over a billion just to goose a little f u to the world like uh like ah, here's another 100 million assholes well it, i mean they've already beaten the record right and so now it would just be uh to get over the billion like no one has ever sniffed a billion mm. ah the old bee hole yep no one sniffed my butthole no, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Billion hole. I, oh, do, I'm sorry. No uh, one ever fingers my billion hole. Oh, dude, we, we got a dog here that'll sniff a butthole. <gasps> <laughs> Not because of the butthole thing, but yeah. because he's adorable. <laughs> There's the cap. Cap. Yeah, dude, look how big Brock. he is. He's, 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 he's going to be sitting there holding Bonnie next week. He's... <laughs> Hey, wow, I got a shot to finish in fourth. Hooray me. Oh, shit. What what, what changed? Uh, right along two motherfuckers. Oh, shit. Yeah, didn't the first, wasn't the first one like a, a little bit of a surprise hit? Yeah. Right along two. Or right along gross. Let's look at right along gross. Right Box along. office Majot reveals that right along made $134 million. Um, and uh, it, it might do just as well because all uh, black people are forced to see Kevin Hart movies. <laughs> it's a uh, yeah. Which, by the way, we should really question Donald Trump about that policy. <laughs> let's ask. Let's get someone <laughs> at the next town hall to say why is it that all black people are forced at gunpoint to watch Kevin Hart movies? You know, he's he's a great guy. He's a great guy, Kevin. I've golfed with him. He's a great guy. Black people need to see his movie. <laughs> it's a, uh, I'm sorry. It's just, it's just. Uh, look, uh, uh, gravity pulls down. I'm not, I'm not politically correct. I'm not politically <laughs> correct. But Kevin Hart, he's a great guy. I've talked to him. I've talked to him. I can call him on the phone right now. Kevin Hart, black people see his movies, Kevin Hart. I'm promoting Ride Along 2 along with uh, running for president. We're going to make Kevin Hart great again. <laughs> That's what makes me greater than Kevin Hart, is that I'm richer than him. I don't really have a Donald Trump impression, but I do have a Donald Trump hand impression. Your voice is like, close. I got, yeah. His hands are always kind of palms up, or they're like going up, and then when he wants to make points, he just kind of side chops himself. He has one <laughs> hand side chop himself. He, he, uh, he hammers his ribs. He does. <laughs> to prove that he's that man, that he's, that he's, that he's, 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 uh, can mas macho. Kevin Hart's gonna win. He always wins. I played him in, uh, Tiddlywinks. Kevin Hart won. He's not a loser like that Tyler Perry. Yeah, he's not a loser like, uh, that Tony Braxton. Why you gotta do Tony Rats? Like okay, that? I mean, listen, he's got an enemies list. <laughs> is that a thing you bought at a store or a thing you found on the side of the road? You, buy, you can buy those. Okay. It's uh, an antler. I mean, you didn't go for that. That's what's great about you, Bonnie. You buy the good stuff. Bonnie, my wife, she goes out, she gets antlers off the side of the road. Uh, I could have. I could have. Uh... Just gotten it off of probably the three dead deer I pass every day. On, on your way ride. to go to the, the antler, antler store? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on the way to go get antlers at a store. I've had, I've had that, many, uh... I'd like to imagine the first time you do that and you have like the girls in the back, it's going to be an experience for them where you just pull <laughs> off on the side of the road, open up the back, and take out a hacksaw. hacksaw. Oh it just. <laughs> Make sure to bring the girls. I think that they have to learn. I'm just saying, point. you see one, you got to take advantage of it. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. the coyotes will get it. Oh, man. I remember uh, I had this professor who was who was building, like, his dream home, and it involved gargoyles. 
and he wanted to, yeah, I was an art major, so he was a, my sculpture major, and he's like, if anybody finds a dead armadillo, please pick it up and bring it home. Oh, my you know, God. Because, like, I totally. Because they need homes. They need well. <laughs> Do you realize how many homeless dead armadillos there are? So he's just like, yeah, because then I'll, I'll make it into a stone gargoyle or whatever. And he was going to cast it, you know. And then um, I was like, oh, man, I came back. I was like, oh, man, you know, if I didn't have my dog with me, I would have totally thrown that armadillo in the back. And he's like, he was so, like, really? He was offended that he you... He was like, you really didn't get it? Like, I really need like, dude, that guy. It's like, dude, it, <laughs> it, it, it either is going to still be on the road for you or it's going to be in my Dalmatian's belly. Yeah. Those are the only two choices. Yeah, I'm sorry. It just wasn't going to work. <laughs> And then, and then later that day, he's like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm still looking for an armadillo. You might throw like an extra bag in your car just so that you can." <laughs> he's like, "In fact, I've given you yeah. all armadillo suitcases. Yes, yes. They'll keep most of the smell out. We got armadillo kits available if you just pick it up on your way out. Seriously, looking for a armadillo. I know they're around. Here's a." Uh... <laughs> it starts with one thing. I don't know why. It doesn't even matter how hard you try. Keep that in mind. I designed this right. thing. Time. Oh. I know. Time is a valuable thing. Watch it. Fly by. How's that? Swings. Watch it. Down to the end of the day. The clock. Takes life away. So unreal. Then look. Watch the time. Go right out the window. Trying to hold on. Didn't even know. I wish this all just to watch. You? Go! I kept How long until one of these I is created know. entirely by oh, an AI? Where it meant to be. Will eventually be a memory. I'm a time. Try so hard. And got so far. But in the end, it doesn't even matter. Uh, hey! Two. Four. Lose. It. Oh. Is that Preston Garvey a little while? Oh, yeah. It doesn't even matter. These are movies. One thing. I don't you know why. It doesn't even matter. How hard you try. Keep that in mind. I designed this right. What's nice about this one is that they actually kind of made it go to the rhythm. Like, yeah. No, a lot of them are just kind of like, like uh, it does feel a little bit more AI sort of manufactured where you're just like, like finding uh, the lines and scripts and then, you know, pulling them out where it takes a ton of time. Right. But it doesn't, um, uh, it doesn't really fit. That was good. I, I, I almost do feel like I would rather more obscure movies if you could just find for the choruses, mm. like more complete things. Right. Mm. Yeah. Uh, like uh, the the hello one, the Adele's hello. There was a big big one going around, and it wasn't even to the beat at all. It was just mm. like, here are the the words. Everybody's we, like, we, we love Adele so much. We'll just you know champion anything. Justin, did you ever watch uh, uh, the Venture Brothers? Uh, I mean, here and there. I I haven't like I'm not like up to date on it or nothing. Uh, David Bowie featured prominently in uh, at the end of season two. I, I uh -huh. think um, there's this uh, somebody in posted here. I reposted it in the chat. Uh, if you're able to click on. Uh -oh. right. No way! Is, is that David Bowie? Brock Samson. It's been a while. Not long enough. You're lucky I don't kill you right here after what you pulled in Berlin. <sighs> You're welcome to try. What the hell are you doing here? He's giving me away. Mm. You look fabulous. Thank you so much for doing this, David. Honey, uh, do something. You traitorous bastards. I should have known. I order you to stop. 30 years of taking orders from Was that man. Iggy Pop, I think? 30 years of playing the yeah. idiot. Now you're gonna be my dog. Cool. And pop. No way. Hello, I'm David Bowie. What the? Make way for the Homo Superior! Bowie. That's sovereign to you. Alright, this is just a best of thing. I didn't know if it was a particularly good clip or something. Uh, they, for, for like a full season. You they... know what? The, the, the funniest thing about Bowie 
is that like he worked so seamlessly into comedy because you could always play him as perfection. Like, because if you look, like, look at that, look at him in Zoolander, sure. and look at him on Extras. The joke is effectively always the same. Yeah. You run into David Bowie, who's the most perfect person on the planet, like, who is artistically uncompromised, is without peer in, in power, and will, uh, you know, has an, an eternal element to him, right? How did, uh, did, uh, how do you do that? <laughs> I mean, I mean yeah. you David Bowie, who was just, you know, A, was kind of never, uh, he kind of played it perfectly. Like, he was as talented as anybody, but there mm -hmm. have been people who were as talented, right? He always knew his range, and he always fit perfectly into it, and then found the most interesting thing that he could do. Well, and, and that's the thing, is I think he found the most unique corners that were within his range you know within his brand within his range but it's like oh i bet this will be a surprise like thinking about when he teamed up with trent reznor for i'm afraid of americans and but, stuff. all right so he always and that's the thing though is that he constantly collaborated yeah and, and so he was never somebody who was like oh you need to be subjugated to my will it was, was like no no, no he was i the want to what you're doing but bring the bowie to it uh and i was listening to it, it was bomani jones on the dan lebertard show who was talking about you know what was amazing about about Bowie is that like his big anthemic songs that as he as as music got kind of more audacious and soulful beyond the art element right like he was obviously kind of perfect as Ziggy Stardust where he was this kind of Andy Warholian art experiment right but like when Prince became big right and you saw like all of this big gigantic, uh, you know, a lot of black artists kind of soul that sort of exploded. He sort of, he copied the music, but never tried to match his vocal range to that. So like Heroes, right? Yeah. As themic as you could possibly can. Heroes as a Rolling Stone song will have, or a Led Zeppelin song, would have huge bombastic vocal range from Mick Jagger. We or, can be heroes! It, right? Yeah. But it's like, Bowie, it's it's restrained. He's like, he like you know, it's just like, oh. Well, and, that, and that's that's the thing is he had this presence, this this simmering. You felt like it could boil over at any point. Um, and again, like thinking back, like at some point, he thought it was a good idea to appear in a Muppet movie, and he was right. That's what's fucked up. Like he was right to say, yeah, let me be in that Muppet thing that's happening. Well, I mean, I mean, uh, you know, famously in, in, in the Bing Crosby special, right? Like that was that was the first time that you got the sense that it's like, okay, Bowie has more of a sense of what's going on than than anybody. What's been most fascinating today is as people are digging back through like Bowie history, uh, two interviews. One famously, uh, an interview uh, with MTV in 1983, where he's like, "So what's up with all these black artists? Because like I'm watching all these." Uh, other channels that aren't MTV, like it's MTV in '83, lauded by everyone as as universally amazing, game changing, culturally important. He's like, yeah, there's other black channels in America that show black artists with music videos. It's kind of weird that y'all don't have those music videos on there. And uh, I forget who it is. Like, has to kind of stammer oh, that's through. Amazing. Here, uh, we got it right here. Yeah. yeah all right. Um, it it occurred to me, having watched MTV over the last few months. Um, that it's 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 got it's a solid enterprise with it and it's got a lot going for it. I'm just floored by the fact that there's so many so few black artists featured on it. Why is that? This Jeff Davis looking motherfucker. Kind of <laughs> Look in at that him. Direction. We want to play artists that seem to be doing music that fits into what we want to play for MTV. There's the, the company is thinking in terms of oh, shit. narrow casting. That's evident. Um, it's evident in the fact that the only few black artists that one does see are on about 2.30 in the morning or, on, or to around 6. Very few are featured predominant, no. predominantly during So here, wait, wait, skip it ahead a little bit because uh, he goes into that, that Mark Goodman gets a little yeah, defensive. Why, but, but why, skip ahead, well, like, he's already on defense, which means like, uh, and, and again, we have the hindsight of, you know, being in, in uh, the early 21st century where it's like, he's not going to win this. <laughs> why is he talking? The answer is like, huh. So how about the uh... <laughs> well, and really, what David Bowie is saying here, if you look in hindsight, is like, 
hey, guess what? You're big now. The second you embrace black culture and black music, you become exponentially bigger. You become bigger than you could ever imagine. It's really nice that you're playing to all the kids on Long Island right now, but guess what kids in middle America really want? They really want Dr. Dre and Tupac. They really want gangster rap. Well, unfortunately, MTV never got the memo, and they died. Well, no, they, I mean, yeah, I mean, they did eventually. You know, here's the uh, the other one that, that I found uh, today was David Bowie explaining to a journalist in 1990. So this is 10 years after it, right? He's already been right on, uh, as MTV is just now realizing, you know, post Yo MTV raps that really, you know, the, the fact that uh, the black artists on TRL are, is where the real money's at. Sure. Uh, David Bowie's explaining to another journalist how music used to be what he wanted to do uh, and so because uh, it was a place to make art but really where the real rock stars are are on the internet this is in 1990 1990 uh, wait and, uh, wait and he knew what the internet was in 1990 knew it and was like and, and me and the uh and uh, uh, uh maybe it was uh so you know, maybe it wasn't ninety. It was a little, but anyway, it just just played sixteen years just, ago. Yeah. Or, okay. Yeah. Uh, I. I uh, oh, here we go. Ninety nine. Yeah. Ninety nine. Whoops. Yeah. Why did you do that? Um, I think I was quite happy to buy into the idea of, of uh, reinvention. Oh uh, no! Uh, All right. So there, there's a shorter uh, clip I saw the, where basically uh, he just says, creative, you know, as as the uh, the guy is scoffing at like, like, oh, but you know, Microsoft and you know the the uh, you know AOL Time Warner merger and uh, you know like all this other stuff. Uh, David Bowie's like, no, 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 no. You're seeing it too narrowly. Like, it, it, it's revolutionary and it will be like where everybody. Oh, look at that. The and smug that dude's smirk. face. Ah. Uh, Wacky artist, go back to space, you weirdo, you belter, uh, dude. And then, yeah, I mean, and then you mix in just like all the, all of you know the uh, as deep as you want to delve into David Bowie's personal life, man. Like, it is a weird and wacky place. Was he a, uh, was he a, a little freaky deaky? I mean, like your 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 conventional norms of freaky deaky do not cover wow. where 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 David Bowie uh, lived on the spectrum. Uh, you know, this is a guy for whom, controversially at the time, uh, said, as it turns out, he wasn't gay or bisexual; that he was always a quote unquote closet heterosexual. Uh, you know, like that was that was the the controversial element to David Bowie's life uh, later. Uh, you know, and then there's there's a bunch of stuff. I mean, like there was stuff today that I think deserves to be talked about. But I think, um, you know, like like uh, that he was uh, accused of, of of sexual assault once uh, in the '90s with a, a lady who came backstage in Dallas. But like, there's another case. Wherein a group of girls who called themselves the baby groupies because they were underage girls who wanted to have sex with rock stars. Right. Uh, I wonder if there's a market for that. David Bowie, and then her friend was so upset that she didn't get to have sex with David Bowie that David Bowie magnanimously invited the other one in and they all had sex together. <laughs> I, mean, I just just now thinking about the underage girls, uh, segue smooth as butter, uh, made me think of your commentary on the on this new Subway campaign, their new campaign of like literally anything but him. Think of yeah. anything but him. <laughs> it's like we're going to like, all right, so the new Subway ad. <laughs> It's have you, have just, you seen the new Subway ads? No, I can't wait. It's, it's like it's like a 800 year history that begins with Paleolithic man and his invention of the sandwich and ends when the modern day. And just leaving one thing out, one guy. There's been a lot of guys who have been. It's with just Subway. yeah, it, and, and it's like it's like not only does it go into the history of Subway, it goes into the history of like at the point of Subway's creation, like. Is it so? Here we go. Wow. Here's here's the ad. <laughs> 65. Subway's founders Fred DeLuca and Dr. Peter Buck teamed up with one simple mission. Fresh. Don't be Jared. The idea seemed crazy in a time when artificial foods and gimmicks were all the rage. But roller skates didn't make food any fresher, and mascots didn't make it any tastier. 
As it turned out, Fred was right. Sandwiches made with freshly baked bread, fresh veggies, and delicious meats would stand the test of time. We were fresh before it was fresh to be fresh. The Subway Sandwich Shop founded on fresh. Like, Subway also, please sandwiches. don't think of him. Literally anything. We, it just as long as you're not thinking about him. And certainly don't think of fresh faced children when you're thinking of our sandwiches. Oh. Oh, I just ruined their ad campaign. Wait, what did Sorry. you say? <laughs> I missed it. What what was it? Fresh faces. Fresh oh. faces. Oh. I don't know if I would have used the word fresh if it was my ad. You definitely yes. said the word. Uh, someone Uh-oh. said it in this Photoshop. Shwitty Stardust. Dude, that's uh that's an oh accurate photo. Oh my god. Oh my god, that's hilarious. Next time you guys say that I'm not fat, I just want to remind you of those thighs. Yeah. But, but look at the thigh gap. Although although that's, that's gonna be posted. Thigh thigh gap. That's gonna be posted on D's knees any minute <laughs> on that subreddit. Oh my gosh. You guys, come on. If this hair was green, how accurate was this would this photo be, Brian? Right. Pretty pretty accurate. Pretty accurate. Pretty accurate. That's uh I, I can find some of those photos. <laughs> what is the deal? What when did thigh gap become a thing? Ah, uh, 2013, 2012. No, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, recently. Uh, no, or, no. I mean, I'm gonna say not recently, unless I mean, 20 years ago when I was in college was recently. Dude. When we we well, were I'm, shouting yeah. at Nancy Kerrigan as she did a flip, uh, twirl around, and you could see her snatch gap as she was going <laughs> during the Olympics. So whenever the the, the 90 94 Olympics, that's when it was a thing for me. But my okay, guess, wait, all right. But so so was it a thing with girls like as well or is it always just a lecherous guy thing i i can only speak for the lecherous guy contingency yeah and say no, that it's been too. a thing I mean, for I'm us just trying to, yeah i'm just trying to speak to my 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 my, my level of, of of expertise i i know that once i heard about it 20 years ago because brian shares all those details yeah man i, I was like i am so glad i have a real measure like i know i'm not fat if i just have the gap, the gap. You and know, you so, like, that has been, yeah. yeah, so that's been my motivator since, I'm like. Man, I'll tell you I'm what, I, I, I'm, oh my god, Yeah. it's what? not a <laughs> unrealistic standard. <laughs> Yeah. Also, it's like, you're ahead of the curve, girl. <laughs> like, having grown up in, 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 between, like, uh, a, a, an Italian family and a Latino culture, not huge on thigh gaps. Like, like yeah. nobody's freaking out about a lot of thigh. Just, wow. just thighs to beat the band. God, I gotta tell you, like that. But that was like my first thing too. Like when, when I was like in about Penny's age, and my mom was struggling with being overweight, and we could get into that if you really want to get depressed. But it's like, so she struggled with being overweight and doing all these Jenny Craig's and diet things and like I was aware of it and I was also very aware that she would eat Fritos and wouldn't lose weight so there was this like you know as a young girl you're aware of all these things and then I look down and I see my thighs on on television no 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 well oh. no <laughs> on like you know like we're going in and like when you sit down your thighs just kind of go blue you know because you're sitting down and you're not blue. engaging them they just kind of go blue and I was just horrified at how fat my legs were. Like, what have I like, become? Yeah. What yeah. have I become? <laughs> what have I become? What have I become? What have I become? What have I become? So, um, <laughs> so I love, I love having the, I love having the gap standard. I think mm. that's, that's a good standard for somebody who's. I don't know issues. if I have the gap. I, I, I just, I never knew it was a thing, man. Thick yeah. thighs, were, I just were. You know, thick thighs rule everything around me. Got to get the cream. Dollar dollar yeah. bill, y'all. But you know what? <laughs> Do you know what my favorite thing, too, is, like, on this issue? Is looking at, like, old copper tone ads or, like, old... Old like suntan ads. Oh, my God. From the and 70s. you... I, I, can I guess? Can I guess? What? All you're doing is seeing, like, she's got cellulite. No, 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 no. I'm looking at it, and, like, those are, like, real bodies. Like, they, you know, even, like, the cartoons and just everything that they held up as, like, a beauty standard. I'm like, oh, that's what a real body is supposed to look like, and I've got that, you know? So I find that really, like, comforting that that back when, like, like they hadn't started Photoshopping everything, that, that like, I had a chance at some point, you know? <laughs> so... But now I don't because I, I can't Photoshop myself everywhere. I go. <laughs> I'm just I out know. of the running. Give, give, give this team a minute. 
they'll have you taken care of. I'm, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get drinks. Sure. But you, you know, anything, we've always got these knees, uh, right? These <laughs> knees. I feel like I need yeah. to cover my knees now. I'm all right. <laughs> look at Showing those knees. Woo! Oh, this Brian. is oh, Jesus. oh God. Yeah. I'm so embarrassed. I'm flush now. Uh, this is so. You'll know embarrassment so, when the gift shows up. <laughs> uh, someone sent this. I have a feeling it's gonna be funny. I don't know. Sample the voice of Greg Reese. Oh yeah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> definitely. Internet millionaire. Internet millionaire. You can be an internet millionaire. Base! <laughs> Fire! I'm dancing. <laughs> I'm dancing. Rah! Kick it! YouTube. Baby. Check out my YouTube channel. Facebook friend. From internet to international, from internet to international. Are you ready? <laughs> basketball, basketball, basketball. We love basketball. <laughs> nice lady. <laughs> XD. I'm in the studio. I'm in the studio. Hip hop, you don't stop. Hot, cold. Hot. So this goes on. Cold. This is hot. amazing. Cold. I know. I, I, I'm wait, 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 loving it. Hot, you don't this has, stop. It gets sound effects. Hot. hot. Cold. Clean. Hot. Cold. Lower register. Hot. Cold. Oh, never mind. That was I'm on the guy. radio. Headlines. <laughs> Connectivity. Power. I'm on the TV. <laughs> Internet. Where are you supposed to use these? Headlines. Um, it's news. a sample. Like, if you want to hire World him. World news. Like, no, no, no! You don't have to hire him. But like he just wants to get his, his his voice out there. Yeah, I think it's like like what he sends out to people when he's applying America. for jobs. Cause like Twitter, you do the voice. MySpace, diamond. You could get hired to do voicing. Social network for but things. I, but I think Fix. you you would do a monologue, or you would you would do Internet something that's a little more there. like. Chad no, but Hurley. this is what he Steve does, Tim, man. Internet. Sergey Brin. YouTube. North America. See, I can South spell Sergey right. <laughs> Europe, Africa, Asia, Antarctica. Worldwide cheesy rap computer. <laughs> cheesy rap. <laughs> Desktop publishing. <laughs> Desktop yeah, publishing. Good. Thanks, sir. More free. I right, maybe you're right. He's great. I, I love think you're him. right. No, I I really enjoyed that. That was great. Good for him. I want someone to make. Have you ever seen someone made a Half Life mod where they replaced all the sound effects with a guy just making all the sounds? Oh so really? Like, <laughs> that's great. I want someone to do that again, but with just these samples. <laughs> <laughs> Sergey Brin! Larry Page. Larry Page. Larry Page. <laughs> desktop publishing. Desktop. Why desktop publishing? That's so. It's like. You a never dated. know, man. I guess. He did say MySpace, so it could be for all years. This is what? Oh. Yeah. The guy. That guy. The guy. Alright, you want to do one more video before we. Yeah, go? yeah, yeah. Let's go. This is called I. I'm not a robot. I don't believe it already. I like computers. Internet. Seems this legit. Is drink, drink rings. I'm not a robot. 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 But, but, but in the pretty little girl. Is this paperweight? <laughs> That's my aesthetic, though. Big. Uh. Surprise? Turns out it was Maybe a robot. Bowie died for this. <laughs> <laughs> David Bowie died for your dank memes. I mean, this one's short, and it looks like an actual comedy skit. Hmm. 
Wait a minute, Doc. Are you telling me that it's 825? Precisely. Damn it. I'm late for school. <laughs> Let me guess. Uh, what's the over-under on an explosion? It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Oh my God. Good man. Pretty good. Oh, that was rocket jump. What is this? Oh, that was only a couple days ago. That's great. All right, I'm ready. Let's go. What? Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah! Come on, I'm hard. I'm hard. Let's do it right now. No! <laughs> it's too early. <laughs> the ending came too early. <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry I swear. I swear, guys, never this happens. never happens. <laughs> it's never. All right, let me hit. <laughs> Great show, guys. <laughs> Dying of fire. What uh, do we call it? <laughs> <laughs> Part of me would love to just throw that in the feed. <laughs> just as I as a... hmm. All right. Gonna go in three, two. Oh, no.